Hi, this is Misha, and we're kind of starting a new series here on the classic Walther handguns. And in my hands is the first military handgun that Walther produced, the Model 4. Now, my collecting habits, I, I like military guns. So, just to backtrack a bit, Carl Walther established the company in 1886 in uh, Zella St. Blasia, Germany. And in, in 1899, FN of Belgium released the Model 1900, and this is important because it was the first commercially available 32 caliber gun, and it started a really big craze for, for pocket guns in Europe and America. Well, Walther saw this, and uh, in 1908, Fritz Walther, Carl's son, convinced the father and the company to go in the direction of making a small 32 and 24, excuse me, 25 caliber uh, handguns. The first prototype was called the Venus in 32. It never went into mass production, but it kind of led the way. And in 1910, Walther's 25 caliber Model 1 was released. Well, it was pretty successful. They managed to sell about 30,000 of them before World War I began. But also in 1910, FN released the Model 1910, which kind of Re redesigned the, the field. It had a uh, spring around the barrel as opposed to above or below it. It just had a more modern look to it, even a look today we would recognize. So Walther went back to the drawing board and developed the Model 3, which actually came out in 1913. Interestingly, the Model 2, which was in 25 and was supposed to be the replacement for the Model 1, came out a year later in 1914. Anyway, the Model 3 was in 32 caliber. It was Walther's first 32 caliber handgun, and it came out in 1913. And what the Model 4 is, is a scaled up version of the Model 3 for military and police use. The Model 4 came out in late 1914. The earliest Model 4s were basically what they call transitional models, or Models 3 slash 4. You have the same length of slide on the Model 4 as the 3. But you have this bushing that has a longer barrel, and also the grip is extended down. So you have an extra cartridge in the, in the grip as well. The Model 4 is 5.9 inches long and has a 3.5 inch barrel. Weighs in at about 18 ounces and holds 8 cartridges. Now the Model 4 is important for Walther is it was the one that actually got them their first military contract. Right when this came out, World War I began. And in 1915, the German government assigned Walther a contract for a quarter million pistols. So with wartime, this version here came out, the uh, Type 2 version 2. The original version had 12 smaller slide serrations. The wartime model here has seven large ones. This is an earlier one, so it still has the trough style rear sight. has a triangular front sight has an exposed sear bar. If you see here, right beside the trigger, I'll pull it so you can see it moving. Tip, typical heel mag release. Actually pretty easy to use as far as European heel releases go. Has a small screw in the back you can use to uh, tighten or loosen the tension on the mainspring. It's a simple blowback gun doesn't have a bolt hold open or a slide hold back of any type. It ejects from the left side. Has a safety catch here. To engage it, you kind of need to use your off hand. But to uh, disengage it, you can just take your thumb. So it's pretty easy to disengage. For an early gun, it's not near as awkward as some of them I've seen. So it is what it is. It has a respectable trigger. Nothing to write home about. But quite light. It is hammer fired, whereas the Model 1 was actually striker fired. Yeah, in 1915 these went into production in for the war effort. In 1916 a version that had a, um, a drift adjustable rear sight came out and also in 1916 basically the German military's needs outstripped Walther's ability to deliver guns so they outsourced some small parts and even whole gun manufacturing to about eight or nine different subcontractors. 
Well, this would continue until 1918 at the end of the war with the uh, late, what's called the late second variation. This is an early second variation. And in total, about a quarter million, 250,000 were produced of this type. Also, the first variation, there was probably five or 6,000 produced, so relatively small run. Well, that was the wartime, and these were quite popular with soldiers because simple, durable, reliable, they worked well in the trenches. You know, the, the P08 Luger was a standard issue gun. It fired a more powerful 9mm cartridge, but this was lighter, easier to carry, and for close range defensive type use, it was perfectly fine. Well, after the war, well, there briefly went on hiatus, but in 1919 they were allowed to resume manufacturing because they were considered to be critical to Germany's economy, and they restarted Model 4 production. Some sources say in 1920, some say in 1922, but anyway, the early 20s. And um, this here is a post-war, as you can see it has the drift adjustable rear sight. The trough has been smoothed down. It, is, it has an internal sear bar now. They made that so it wouldn't get disrupted by dirt or mud. It has 17 fine serrations as opposed to the, or excuse me, 16 fine serrations as opposed to the seven. It's a little bit nicer there. It has a little bit nicer bluing, a little shinier, whereas the other one was more of a, a dull rust blue. Still uses the same eight shot magazine. Same type of grips, pretty much the same, just a few cosmetic differences. They would produce these until around 1923 or 1924. Then they would do one more small production round called the fourth variation in 1928 and 1929, which they were doing immediately before the release of the very famous Walther PP series, which we'll get to very soon. But the Model 4 was the first truly successful handgun that Walther did. It was popular with civilians in the 20s. It was very much used by the military in World War I. They made uh, about 300,000 all told, with about 20,000 at least made after the war, probably a little more. Finding records on these is a little hard to find, but um, yeah. Some sources claim they came out with this model in 1910. But I've been researching these for probably about 10 years, and I, it seems like my, it seems like 1914 is is the better date, because 1910s when the Model One came out. And I don't think they did Model One, Two, Three, Four all in the same year. That doesn't seem plausible. Plus, they were obviously were making these for military police use, and there wouldn't have been as much of a need that early on. Anyway, these are fun little guns. They still work quite well today because of how simple they are. They're quite ergonomic for their size. They're not huge, but they're not the tiniest things ever. Good service type size guns. What they really did though is they were a inspiration for the later Walther PP and PPK, showing that a, a direct blowback gun was uh, financially viable for the company. These are of course single action only. As I said, they have a concealed hammer, and of course the later Walthers would be double action. They have several advancements, which would come from later models like the Model 8. But uh, yeah, the Model 4, not a whole lot out there on them. It's a neat little Walther. It really is. And um, yeah, there's not a whole lot more to say about them. Within the variations, you'll see the slide legends change a little bit over time. After World War II, the, excuse me, World War I, the, the town would be named, renamed Zella Mellis and Walther would keep its factory there until 1945. So the later post-war guns will be Mark Zella Mellis, not Zella St. Blasia. But um, yeah, so I would share this. It's definitely one of the most interesting of the early Walthers. They would do the Model 5 as well, which was uh, produced very briefly during World War II. They would do the Model 6, which was a scaled up Model 4 for 9mm Parabellum. It was a direct blowback 9, so it was not terribly successful, much like the Dre's 9. It didn't really go much of anywhere. They didn't make very many. And then in 1917, 1918, they would make the Model 7, which was another 25 caliber. It looked a lot like this, except it ejected from the right side and was in 25 caliber instead. So. There's kind of a whole little family there that would end eventually with the Model 9. 
but we're just looking at the military guns today. Well, if you have any questions, please post them below. And um, as always, thanks for watching.